So let's look at another basic statics problem. Uh, here we have a beam, which is just a horizontal line uh, with two connections. Here we've just arbitrarily chosen one as a pin, so we know that that can't translate in any direction, and a roller, which can translate in the horizontal but not in the vertical. Um, and we've placed a force P1 at an arbitrary point A from uh, point A, and this whole beam has a length of L. So this is a lot of information, and what we're going to do is find out the reactionary forces um, at the ends. Um, so, like we did before, we first need to draw the forces that aren't shown in this diagram. Um, we know that the pin can possibly create a reactionary force vertically and horizontally, and the roller can create one horizontally. Notice I'm just numbering these uh, just to distinguish them in my formulas. Uh, you can number it really any way you want. Um, uh, remember, we're also going to care about our coordinate system here, which I'm just going to draw up here. So that means that positive, for our purposes, is up and right. That's arbitrary, but it's going to help keep everything standardized and, and working together in the right way in our formulas. So we know there's three formulas. Uh, we're first going to look at uh, making all the net forces in the horizontal direction zero. There's only one here, so we know immediately that R2 is zero. And that's just uh, something that becomes more intuitive. If you see a force given to you in a problem that's completely vertical, there's probably going to be no horizontal forces anywhere in this problem. Um, next, we're going to look at Fy. How's that equal zero? Well, there's three we've drawn. R1 and R3 are positive in our sense, and P1 is negative, so let's just write that right now. R1 plus R3 minus P1. And that's our second equation. Finally, we're going to look at moment. Let's say that clockwise is our positive direction. Um, now, moment, you can choose around any point. And uh, really, it doesn't matter. It's pretty much going to give you the same amount of work. Let's just arbitrarily pick B. And then we care about, around this point, what other forces in the body are giving me a sense of rotation. Uh, we know that we don't care about R3 because it's right on point B. Um, so it's not going to produce any moment, but we're going to look uh, at P1 and then P R1. So P1 is at a distance L minus A from B, and it's downwards. Now, um, to figure out a sense of rotation, like put your finger on the point and go downwards here, and then just start to go around a circle around your right finger, and you'll see the point here. Um, so this is going to be negative in our, in our equation. So you write P1 times the distance. Let's put a negative sign right there. And then we're going to look at R1. Now R1 is positive in our sense, and it's at a distance L. Alright. Now if you write this out, uh, let's see. We can solve for R1. Now, we tend to want to solve for these variables we've added to the problem because this would be like a constant value, this would be a constant value, this would be a constant. So we want to solve for R1 because we can here. And we can use it back in the second equation. R1 is just P1 times the direction distance variables L minus A over L. So you notice there's an interesting relationship here and it's related to P1. Now we plug it back into here. If you do, you'll get R3 equals P1 A over L. And we decide that R2 is zero. So what does this mean? This tells us a lot because we've stayed abstract. So staying abstract gives you a very general understanding of any kind of problem in this general, in this sense. You have one side being L minus A over L and one side being A. So notice that depending on A, you're going to change your values here. If A is L over 2, so say if this force is right at the center, what would these forces be? You'd have L minus L over 2, which is L over 2 over L, so you have 1 half. Um, and then here you have um, L over 2 over L, which is again 1 half. So P is distributed evenly on you, so each side gets P over 2 force outwards. Now you move it to the left a little bit, so A becomes small. So this value, L minus A, is going to be bigger than A. So you're going to get more of the force being um, counteracted on this side than that. And just, that's, I mean, simple idea here of 
you're holding on, these are your connections. You push here, I'm feeling the same force on my left hand fingers. As I go on this side, well, it's gonna, I'm pushing harder with my middle finger here. I'm on this, and now the force is on this side, I'm pushing harder with my thumb. That's intuitive, and you can see that very obviously with the variables, with the expressions we've derived.